there are two things that I'd mention. The first is some of the clinical trials that have been done, which really have shown uh, incredible benefits of using probiotics in various different conditions, and the breadth of those conditions. Formerly, we really associated probiotics with assisting in gut conditions, but now we know they can assist in things like eczema and asthma, and perhaps even in restoring brain function or relieving anxiety in people. And the other thing that I think is very impressive is the advances in determining the mechanistic basis of these probiotics, what exactly it is they do that cause these effects. And I think the two of those combined, the, the really nice efficacy studies and a better understanding of how these probiotics perform, has really moved the science of probiotics forward. Yes, I think that's fair to say that. I know that in Ireland, at least, uh, the treatment of IBS, for example, has moved very much in the direction of probiotics. People are looking for solutions, and probiotics seem to be providing solutions. Uh, for other conditions which have very few available treatments, probiotics are also becoming more and more popular. Um, what's missing, maybe, is the endorsement by the regulatory authorities of these effects. So at the moment, they're sold almost by word of mouth or through people telling each other of the benefits without really a proper regulatory approval. Many people are producing probiotic products that are quite obviously not probiotic. Probiotic floor cleaners, probiotic aftershave has been produced. Uh, there are lots of probiotic products which have not been validated in any way. We don't even know if they contain live and safe bacteria. Uh, we, or we convened the consensus panel because we were getting very worried about the direction that this was going, and we felt that we need a better definition, one that's enforceable and one that's reasonable for producers and consumers alike. is correct to say if, if a bacterium is present in a food that is alive and active. I think the consumer is entitled to know that. We think that the term probiotic should be usable where there is a reasonable expectation of a benefit by the average uh, consumer. And then health claims should be reserved for those probiotics which have demonstrated um, evidence to satisfy regulatory authorities. But the word probiotic itself, I think, uh, doesn't have to be perfect, but it, it should be more useful than it is right now.